Hi everyone. So today we're going to be running through the practical uh, skills test. And in particular, we're going to be going through accuracy, reliability, and validity, right? So for each one of these, uh, we'll be starting off with accuracy. Each, for each one of these, we'll, we'll, go, we'll, we'll be going through how to assess the accuracy and also how to improve the accuracy, right? Because often these are questions that students find really difficult to kind of get full marks in, in their exams. So that's why um, <clears throat> I'm here to go through that with you today. So let's get, um, so, 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 so after we go through accuracy, validity, and reliability for these three, um, then we'll be going on to having a look at a practice uh, problem that, that asks us to assess and improve these things. So let's, so, so, so let's get started with accuracy. So, so first, uh, before we go on to how to assess and how to improve, let's just quickly get an overview of what is accuracy, right? So, so what is accuracy? What is accuracy? So accuracy is really all about, you know, how close are you? How close, how close are you? How close are you to the true value? How close are you to the true value? So often that can be in terms of percentage error um, or comparing to the value that you should have gotten, the one that's published in the, in the literature. It's also about reducing systematic error, right? It's re reducing systematic error. Reducing systematic error. Now let's just quickly go through what systematic error is. First of all, it's it, it's not it's not human error, right? It's not human error. What do I mean by that? You know, it's not like oh, you know, he never, he, you know, they're forgetting to convert between meters and centimeters. It's not that, right? What is systematic error? Systematic error. Systematic error is an error that is constantly wrong in the same direction each time, right? So it's 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 same. It, it's 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 a reading that is off reading that is off by constant amount in a constant direction. So an example, and we'll see how this contrasts with random error soon. So an example of this <coughs> might be, an example of this might be, um, if you forget to tear the scales, right? So let's say that, that you have some scales, right? And it reads 0 0.05 grams just with nothing on it. Then if you weigh stuff, then everything will be off by 0 0.05 grams. So in that way, you're introducing systematic error, right? So that's an example of systematic error. So accuracy is about how close are we to the true value and also about reducing that systematic error. Um, because systematic error is going to push us f push us further away from the true value. Okay, so let's go on to assessing, right? So let's assess, let's assess the accuracy, right? Let's assess, assess the accuracy. So let's say that we have some kind of experiment and we want to assess the accuracy, right? Well, one thing that's really easy, it's a, it's a really easy way for us to tell if it's accurate or not, is by like looking at the number of decimal places, right? Now that might sound a bit weird to you. Um, <clears throat> technically, this is more precision. Uh, if you were in the US, um, <clears throat> the US syllabus recognizes this as precision. But in Australia, uh, no one really cares. Uh, we just treat the number of decimal places as indicative of of um, an increase in accuracy, right? Um, because it's indicative that your instrument is more accurate, right? The more decimal places you have, the more uh, accurate your instrument, and therefore the more accurate your experiment. So this is often a really, really useful one. You know, uh, if you just can't think of anything else to write for accuracy, this is your go-to response, really easy, and almost all teachers accept it. 
Next one. Uh, did we reduce system? So, 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 did we minimize? Did we minimize? Did we minimize? Minimize systematic error. Right? Did we minimize systematic error? Did we minimize systematic error? <coughs> so, how do we check this one? Right? How do we, how do we check this one? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Right? It's a lot of the, basically you just um, say, you know, in this experiment that was given, have I um, done things to reduce its amount of error? So for example, did you tear the scales, right? Were they reading zero when you started off with? Did you read from the bottom of the meniscus, right? Bottom of the meniscus, bottom of the meniscus, meniscus. Did you calibrate the machine properly, right? Did you calibrate the machine? Did you calibrate the machine? <laughs> <All right. clears throat> so these are all great examples of ways that we can minimize the systematic error. Now, finally, another thing that we, that we can do is we can compare to the true value. Com comparing to the uh, published or accepted value. So f for example, in physics, let's say that you measure gravity and you get G is equal to 7.2 meters per second squared. Well, then what you would do is that you know that gravity as in given your data sheet is 9.81 uh, meters per second squared, sorry. 9.8, I think. Then what you do is you calculate the percentage error, right? So just in case you forgot what percentage error or how you calculate it, you would do like, um, you would do um, 7.2 minus 9.8 over 9.8. So that's the, your measured value. So measured minus true over true. So, so then you do give that as a percentage. In this case, you know, we might have um, we might have that'll be uh, twenty seven percent error, right? So, so in this case, we, we would have twenty seven percent error. So, so you might say, yeah, that's pretty big. So therefore, it's not very accurate. So, so these are the three things that we can do to assess our accuracy, right? Now, none of the small places did you minimize this matter error by tearing bottom of the meniscus, calibrated. The, the machine and, and there's plenty more other ways to minimize systematic error like for example did you always uh, measure from the same place right measure from you know the same starting point did you always um, use the uh, same uh, is your ruler you know um, actually the right length because you know some rulers might might be it might say it's one centimeter, but it's actually not one centimeter. It might only be, you know, maybe this length is only 0 0.95 centimeters. S -s -s stuff like that. Finally, comparing to the tr true value. Okay, <clears throat> so that's how we assess the accuracy. Let's go on to improve our accuracy. So also you might see, you know, how can I improve the accuracy of my experiments? So this is often a very tricky one, so that's why we're going through it today. So one really easy way to improve your accuracy. So again, remember that accuracy is all about um, getting closer to the real value and reducing our systematic error. So to get better to, the <coughs> to <coughs> so one really easy way to get closer to the true value is to use better equipment, right? Use better equipment. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, what do I mean by this? There's there's uh, two ways in which this is true. In this sense, <clears throat> when I say you want to use better equipment, what I mean is that the equipment is just inherently better. In inherently better.
as an example, you know, if you were using a plastic pipette to transfer fluids, you might want to upgrade to a glass pipette, right? Because it's more accurate. It's far more accurate. The, the, the design is a lot more uh, robust and, and, uh, and it's calibrated more and it's not as cheap and crappy as a plastic pipette. So this would give you better accuracy, right? Or for example, you might want to use a light gate, a light gate instead of a stopwatch, instead of a stopwatch. So a light gate is like a machine that uses light to sense when something passes through it. So that might be better than using a stopwatch because then you re reduce, you know, uh, uh, human reaction time and you reduce, um, you reduce human reaction time and you, re and you also, and, and also, um, <clears throat> it's, uh, the most accurate you can get because you're using this, the speed of light. So these kind of things are just inherently better. This is just inherently, it, it's just better. It's just more accurate. Or another example might be instead of using a, you know, your, your typical centimeter ruler, you might decide to upgrade into, you might decide to upgrade into a <clears throat> caliper. Or if you're measuring stuff that's really small, you might even want to go to a micrometer. So basically, you're using equipment that's more and more accurate. That's just in, that becomes inherently more and more better. Okay. Another way. So so really, it's it's all it's always about um, improving accuracy. Um, it, sorry. In improving the the quality of the equipment. Uh, sometimes, you, if there was, so, so so if there is, if there, if there is systematic error, right? So if there is systematic error, so like for example, if you can see that in a graph, you know the line doesn't go through the origin when it's meant to, then you can tell that there is systematic error. Then then you want to eliminate this as well. Then eliminate the systematic error too. And that might be through, you know, tearing. That might be through calibrating. <clears throat> might be through getting better equipment, getting better or new equipment. So, so, this, so this is definitely your 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 first go to re response, right? Now, generally though, you're not going to see this very often. Generally, teachers aren't going to give you like blatantly obvious uh, systematic errors. So you'll be actually going back to this kind of better equipment. So one, so as I was saying before, one way to have better equipment is just equ equipment that is inherently better, right? Like what we've seen here. You can also go with some other ways to make your equipment better. So for example, let's say, so, so you can also use digital equipment, digital equipment over analog, analog equipment. Why is that? Well, you know, there's, um, it's, 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 a, it's a less subjective what the reading is, right? Less sub subjective of the reading. Like some, sometimes, um, you know, you, I might think it's 6.2, you might think it's 6.3. Uh, there's also no parallax error. Because sometimes if you look at it, you know, sometimes it's 6.2, it, uh, it kind of looks like 6.3. Uh, it's just, you know, parallax error. It depends on the angle, right? And often, often, you can get... I don't know why, why it's so big. <laughs> you can get uh, more decimal places, right? Often analog equipment doesn't give you that many decimal places um, because it's just really hard to read. It, it, like, human eyes can't, can't do that. And then finally, this brings us to our last point. It's also, again, so these, these three tips are all, are all about um, using getting better equipment. So you can also get equipment that is more uh, so, uh, equipment with more decimal places, right? Equipment with more decimal places. So uh, the reason why this is true is that that is just the definition 
of uh, that was part of the definition of accuracy, right? Uh, something that has more decimal places is going to be a more accurate measurement. So you know, like six point two is not as good as six point two three four one eight nine, right? That would be a, this is a more accurate, more accurate reading. Technically, it's just a more precise reading, but um, most teachers just accept that it's just more accurate. <clears throat> so let's just quickly recap that. So um, if if there is a systematic error, then, then you fix that, probably by tearing, calibrating, or something like that. Oftentimes, if there's not, so then we just want to use better equipment. We might want to use equipment that's just inherently better. You might want to use digital equipment, or you might want to use equipment. You, you might just suggest, hey, why don't we just use equipment with more decimal places, right? Okay, so that's the end of part one. Uh, accuracy, let's uh, go on to uh, reliability.